The Star Wars prequels aren't good movies. They suffer from bad writing, awkward acting, overuse of CG, plot holes, and character buttering of beloved characters. But why do people enjoy them? Keep him. Hello fellow Jerry Kent. I originally started writing the script of the video as more of a review of the Star Wars prequel trilogy. Even though, since I was born in 1997, I grew up with these movies. As an adult, I liked them ironically, while acknowledging they're pretty bad movies. So my original intent was going to bash these movies into oblivion, but then I thought of something. There are so many other YouTube videos out there from content creators I highly respect to have reviewed these movies far better than I ever could and most of my points I would mention probably are covered by them all, so I felt that it was going to be redundant. I highly suggest you check out these three reviews of the Star Wars prequel trilogy on YouTube. I think they reviewed these movies the best on this godforsaken website that is infested with hack complaint tubers and clickbaity liars and are far more competent YouTubers than me. Instead, today, I wanted to focus on something else entirely and that is, so many people hated these movies when they came out, but why do so many people love it now? But first, before I do that, I will list the problems I personally have with these movies so you can kind of grasp where I'm coming from and it'll be useful for later. Maybe you can see if I'm biased or not. It's Gear's problem with the prequels in 2 minutes 7 seconds. Ready? <gasps> The dialogue isn't just bad, it makes no logical sense. Every actor except Ian McDermott gives terrible performances. The plot only works because every character except Palpatine are idiots. Characters are inconsistent and dynamic switch between movies. Yoda doesn't speak like he did in the OT. All the dialogue scenes are shot so cheap and lazy, it's always people sitting down on chairs or walking around slowly, making the movie look like a shitty Tuesday morning K-drama. The romantic interactions are laughable. There are too many things that are just told, not shown. I've felt you this tense since, since we fell into that nest of Gundog. Most of the humor is horrendously bad. The CD looks dated and horrible now. The battle scenes have no tension and are boring to look at despite all the CD plastered everywhere. The lightsaber fight scenes are too long. George Lucas cannot direct good action scenes that does not involve lightsabers. Yoda and especially Palpatine use lightsabers are the dumbest thing ever. Ah uh, yes. A Jedi's weapon. Yoda's character is a warmongering idiot and not a wise hermit like he was in ESB. Phantom Menace literally has no protagonist while Attack of the Clones literally has no plot. Anakin shout to his crush like a bloodthirsty mania all the time and they fall in love. And I slaughtered them like animals. Padme's death is an insult to her character. She's lost the will to live? What is your degree in poetry? Unnecessary fan service like C3PO and Chewbacca. Too many unnecessary plot points and characters like General Grievous who contributes nothing to the story. There are too many villains that keep switching which result in Darth Maul and Count Dooku being boring characters in the movie. Some of the story does not match with the original trilogy. Do you remember your mother? Your real mother? Just a little bit. She died when I was very young. Mysteries in OT that need explaining are not explained, such as Luke finding Dagobah familiar in ASB. Something familiar about this place. It's never explained why Yoda decides to go to Exile and not help the Rebellion. Order 66 is a lazy plot convenience to get rid of all the Jedi before the OT that needed supplementary material to explain. The name Vader is just a random word Palpatine thought of and has no significance. Anakin Skywalker, the main protagonist, is too unlikable because he goes from annoying kid to whiny teen to psychopathic adult. Anakin is introduced by the dark side like Obi-Wan said in the original trilogy but then actually tricked into the dark side because he's a big fat idiot. They made Darth Vader into a big fat whiny idiot. You got that? Okay, we can move on. Like I said, instead of focusing on why these movies are bad, I want to focus on why so many people love it now, because these movies had a more turbulent history of love and hate than a certain history joke here. These movies were panned at first when they came out, and it just weren't the critics or the fans. The average viewers thought it was kinda crap. The internet also hated it because of the influence of first generation YouTubers like Mr. Plinkett. People bully Kelly Mary Chan on the internet? Same things happened 15 years ago with the prequels, you know? Star. War. Star. War never changes. Also, hating on George Lucas was like the cool thing to do in the 2000s, sort of like the situation J.K. Rowling is in today. Many of you Gen Alpha people probably don't know this, but George Lucas was the OG living meme movie director, sort of like how Zack Snyder is today. It's kind of understandable because, I mean, the man butchered the original movies with stupid special edition changes, no! made shitty movies like Kingdom of the Crystal Skull and Red Tails, so the image of George Lucas was real good. If you want to take a look back at this time when George was butt of all jokes, I suggest you check out this documentary called The People vs. George Lucas, released in 2010, because it really captures the state Star Wars was in back then. But then, Lucas made a surprise decision to sell Star Wars to the Walt Disney Company. 
a decision that resulted in In short, the sequels came out, and they weren't exactly met with warm welcomes. The fan base was divided, and many began to hate the Star Wars sequels. First came the people that said, The Star Wars sequels suck, the prequels are better. After that, slowly but surely, those people changed to, The Star Wars prequels are not just better, but are misunderstood masterpieces. You're wrong. How could you even say that? I first noticed this change of attitude happening in the Star Wars fandom through Reddit. You know the famous subreddit are prequel memes, right? I remember that subreddit originally started as a sub that mocked the awkward dialogue of the Star Wars prequels and enjoyed the movies ironically like me. But slowly but surely, people started to change. The reposted memes saying sequel suck began to get upvotes, and because Star Wars is like politics in that if something sucks, the opposite gets support. If you're not with me, then you're my enemy. Reposted memes on ironically saying prequel good, sequel bad, because to sprout everywhere, putting the I love, I love democracy them. image on a poll that had the prequels winning in something is the textbook of lazy memes guys. Then PewDiePie made the video reviewing the damn subreddit and prequel memes and now the subreddit is about as big as the main Star Wars reddit page. Anyways my point is I think the cold reception of the sequels is one factor that made the prequels get more love. So one conclusion we can draw is that one of the big factors why the prequels get so much love is because of relative comparison to the sequels. However, I don't think that was enough. Like, for example, if Batman movies in the next 10 years suck, in 10 years, I'm not gonna say Zack Snyder's god-awful DC movies were better because those movies have, does, and will always suck, no matter what. The concept was bad, the ideas were bad, the characters were bad, the movies are just fundamentally broken. And I say the prequels aren't. So, what's the difference? Is there something to the prequels other than relative comparison that makes them beloved? Possibly. Whenever someone says, I think the Star Wars prequels are masterpieces, or I unironically love the Star Wars prequels, I think 99% of the time, they're lying, and lying to themselves. LIAR! You guys don't love the prequel movies. No, in actuality, you guys love the Star Wars prequel universe. If you ask me, the biggest problem with the Star Wars prequel is not the bad dialogue, the acting, nor the story like everyone says. The biggest problem of the prequels could be its greatest strength, and it's that George had too many ideas for the movie, and not enough time. George had too many ideas, and he got carried away with it. As he got old and took complete creative control over the directing, writing, and producing, he failed to make pathos for the audience to care, make the characters likable, and give emotion to the movies. It feels like George was interested in doing everything perfectly except making a good story, which I think is a big shame. What do I mean by saying George Lucas had too many ideas and not enough time? For example, let's talk about the underlings of Palpatine. I know Darth Maul, Dooku, and Grievous are supposed to be three villains with aspects that foreshadow Darth Vader, which is a wonderful idea on paper. But, because George wanted to cram all three villains into three movies, there's not enough time to flesh out these characters. They either die a really stupid death, do nothing in the story and be bland, or be a plot device to distract Obi-Wan. George had so many villain ideas he had to cut a villain for a movie, and that became Asad Adventurous, a character that only appears in spin-off material. If you ask me, they should have kept Darth Maul alive so he and Obi-Wan can have a rivalry like he does in the Clone Wars, so Obi-Wan Kenobi will have a character moment if he's going after Darth Maul for revenge of his master's death or for justice. And I think Dooku and Grievous could have been combined into one character, because their role in the story is the exact same, a temporary pawn of Sidious until he gets his real prize, Anakin. I think the biggest example of George having too many ideas and not enough time in the movies are the clone troopers. I love the clone troopers, trusting men that fight with the Jedi, that question their individuality and if they're no different from the droids, who ultimately turn on the Jedi due to no choice. What a great idea! But in the movies, because we didn't have enough time to get to know the clones, they're just boring talking CG characters who are no different from the droids they fight, and we don't even know why they turn on the Jedi when Palpatine tells them to do so. Just based on the movies, you never know they're programmed to follow Palpatine's orders over anything else, which was explained in the books, or have brain chips in their head, which was explained in the episode of the Clone Wars that came out 9 years after Revenge of the Sith. The structure of the prequels doesn't make much sense either if you think about it. The first movie is about a minor skirmish in the Republic, which isn't really a Star War, 
and it's the second movie where the actual war starts, and the third episode when the Clone War ends. If this was any other filmmaker, the Clone War should have started with Episode 1, Episode 2 should have been a story set in mid-war during the Clone Wars, and Episode 3 should have been the end. But because Doors wanted to explore what the universe was like before the Clone Wars, we barely see the actual Clone Wars in the movie and saw the folly happen on TV shows, which was where we actually got to see Anakin mature and change. What I think George should have done was to hire a writer and give the ideas to him. For example, using the Senate to explain how Poppy got power gives backstory to the character and is a wonderful idea, but the Senate scenes are way too long and should have been condensed or rewritten so they're less boring and don't make me want to doze off. People complain about Rise of Skywalker requiring supplementary material like visual dictionaries to fully understand when the prequels have been doing that for years before. You all just got used to the prequel universe, that's all. And that's another reason why people look fondly back at the prequels, because they love the ideas. George Lucas always says he likes new ideas. He just likes trying out new stuff, no matter if that stuff is good or bad. They wanted to do a retro movie. I don't like that. I like... I, every movie I worked very hard to make them different. I make them completely different with you know, different planets, with different spaceships. He's the guy that said his favorite Clone Wars episode is the one where droids get stuck in the desert which could be the worst Clone Wars episode that was ever made, but it was damn unique. The one with the droids. Oh, when they're out in the middle of nowhere. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god, really? So since I'm not the man, I can't speak for him, but I bet you, if you were to ask him to choose which sequel movie he likes the best, he'll probably pick The Last Jedi. Even if you hate everything about TLJ, you have to admit it's the most unique one out of the bunch with new ideas, compared to the remakes of A New Hope and Return of the Jedi. And I bet his favorite sequel plan is Canto Bite, because he likes it when Star Wars incorporate real life places into the world like it did with the opera at Coruscant. And Canto Bite is a casino. Another reason why people love the prequels is the world building through the detail in the movies, and the expanded lore through the details. Every character in the extras or at the background has a story planned in the prequels. That is why Wikipedia is such an amusing place to read about. All the Jedi you see in the background in the prequels during boring council discussion scenes all have backstories to them. All of them have unique alien designs that make them memorable, which makes the universe interesting and fun. Contrast that to the sequels. On the hero side, it's just gruff looking resistance people that are bland, less interesting than Mario Kart 8 soundtracks. Like, I don't want to know the backstory of these bland human individuals that are just inferior copies of the army they're imitating, which is the original trilogy's rebellion army. God bless you, General Dodona. I understand that the political scenes in the prequels are dumb and boring, and George Lucas is a clown for saying these movies about politics are for 12-year-olds. But, you know, it's a film for 12-year-olds. But I think the reason why these political scenes existed was because George wanted to explain how the prequel world and the Clone Wars operate on a technical level, because he had so many ideas and wanted to explain. It was just executed poorly. But because these scenes exist, we really understand exactly how the Clone Wars work. Who paid for the clones? Which motherfucker Count Dooku? Who built the droids? The Techno Union. Who supplies the money for the Confederates? The Muns and the Banking Clans. Why were they built? So Palpatine get more power. Contrast that to the sequels. Even after three movies, I still don't understand how the sequel world, which consists of the New Republic, First Order, or Final Order, work. How did the First Order get the money to build a Starkiller base? Uh, I don't know. How did they recruit so many troops? Uh, they kidnapped babies? I was taken from a family I'll never know. We were conscripted as kids. All of us. Wait, how can you build an army with just young kidnapped soldiers? Wouldn't Child Protective Services be alerted? What is the difference between the Mew Republic and the Resistance, and why is Leia operating it? Why didn't the Mew Republic have an army? How did Palpatine get 1,000 Star Destroyers that could all destroy planets? You see what I mean? There was like zero thought process to the world building in the sequels, and I think the world building aspect of the prequels is what people love. I think that the screenwriters and the directors of the sequels are more focused on telling a story. <laughs> Yeah, right. And they didn't care about the world building, which makes the universe of the sequel really boring. All the planets too. I love how every planet that appears is different. Not only are the biomes different, but each planet has different architecture, different technology, different culture. Like Naboo, Coruscant, Kamino, Geonosis, Utapau, Mustafar, all look different and feel very unique and memorable. That is why even planets that appear for 5 seconds in the movie, like Felucia, are memorable, and those planets can be expanded greatly in the Clone Wars animated TV show. Again, contrast with the sequels. 
I literally counted three bland forest planets, two desert planets that you probably are not even curious of what their names are. All of them just feel like nostalgia of classic or original trilogy riftbop planets, and the reason why OT planets are kind of boring is because of technical limitations, so they chose desert, jungle, frozen wasteland, sky, and northern California. This is the 2000s, you have CG, you don't necessarily need to copy this for god's sake. And that is why out of all the sequel planets and locations, Exegol is actually my favorite, and it's not only because it's pretty unique and moody. Palpatine's hideout actually has a lot of unique looking architecture with probably a lot of Sith history backstory behind them, and many unexplained seeds for stories to grow like where the Sith troopers and the weird cultists wearing hoods come from. You might hate Exegol because it's the planet that dug up Palpatine from the grave, but I actually really like it because ironically, it's the most unique and memorable sequel planet that I would like to see more in the future. Because of the excellent world building from the prequels, there are so many goddamn spin-off materials from the movies. What I find respectable about George Lucas is that even though his movies were shat on by the audience and the critics, he never gave up on them. When the movies were coming out between 1999 and 2005, there were so many fucking books, comics, merchandise that came out that expanded the prequel universe. I mentioned in the Pokemon vs Star Wars video where I compared George Lucas to Junichi Masuda, I said George Lucas is a man that functions better when he's only an idea man and not the actual filmmaker. He did excellently with the original trilogy, and he did it best with the Clone Wars. Maybe I'll explain why Clone Wars is the best Star Wars content ever created more detailed in a future video, but the Clone Wars is the best thing that came out of the prequels. It feels like George Lucas built a canvas for other writers and creators to draw upon, and Clone Wars is a masterwork of an art that was drawn on the canvas. So the Star Wars prequels aren't good movies, but they're good templates. The Clone Wars has so much story material, we get to see so many aspects of the Clone War. We see the war affecting the higher ups, criminals and outlaws, the Jedi, the soldiers and the opposing forces who are just caught in the battle, and it's wonderful watching the stories of the characters unfold in this universe. What's the point of all this? I mean, why? I don't know, sir. I don't think anybody knows. But I do know that someday this war is gonna end. Then what? We're soldiers. What happens to us then? That is why I believe people love the Clone Wars and prequel universe so much. And that is why I love the prequel universe as well. I feel like George Lucas is like J.R.R. Tolkien with his imaginative world, but the difference is George can't write shit for the life of me. I should have known the Jedi were plotting to take over. Compare that to the sequels. The Resistance vs. First Order is so boring. First, it's just an excuse to bring back OT nostalgia, like Star Destroyers, TIE Fighters, Stormtroopers, and X-Wings because that's what they thought the fans wanted. I clapped! I clapped when I saw it! Second, you need to explain why this war is happening, even if political dialogue is boring. They went the complete opposite way of explaining too much in the prequels to not explaining in the sequels, and we don't even care why the heroes are fighting the villains in the movies. I can't believe the only line explains the Emperor coming back we ever got was literally... Somehow Palpatine returned. Luck science. Cloning. Secrets only the Sith knew. Also, Disney like gave up after the sequels, the only animated series we got that is set in the sequel universe is Star Wars Resistance, which no one watched because it was geared for children. And after Rise of Skywalker, I can't believe the only thing we got is the LEGO Star Wars Holiday Special, which by the way, is the only material that confirms Finn is a force sensitive. Like, what the fuck man? And there are like zero planned materials left for the sequel universe to grow. I know you guys hate the sequels, but I love to see a Clone Wars animated style TV show set between Last Jedi and Rise of Skywalker. It will give us time to like Rey, like how he got to like Anakin through the Clone Wars, and explain plot holes in Episode 9 of how they got the Resistance fleet back, and how Palpatine came back from the dead. Don't give up 5 years and 3 movies for god's sake Disney. You already played your cards so you must use them. What's kind of a shame is because I'm a nerd without a life, I actually somewhat do know the backstory of the Star Wars sequels, and it's not bad. So the reason why Leia is running a Resistance army separate from the Mirror Republic is because a video recording of Bay Organa explaining that she is Darth Vader's daughter got leaked online on the Star Wars internet or something, so she got kicked out of the Mirror Republic Senate, so she was left with her old friends and few soldiers, which is the Resistance army. Also, the First Order was able to get the money and resources to build an army and a Starkiller base because the New Republic was split into two parties, like the Republic was right before the Clone Wars, and the side that was the Confederate Army donated money and resources to the First Order, so that's how they got the army and war broke out. These are not bad ideas, that actually makes the sequel universe make sense. It came from one book called Star Wars Bloodlines. 
And apparently, according to Wikipedia, these ideas about the New Republic splitting up were actually thought up by Ryan Johnson. Well, it would have been nice to explain that on screen in The Last Jedi, Ryan. Don't explain in a book only die-hard nerds will read. Also, the Leia being outed as Vader's daughter story was apparently planned to be an animated movie, so I hope that project becomes real. But no, Disney gave up on the sequels after Episode 9, and now we're back to OT and PT nostalgia because we can't take risks. Even though George Lucas is a bad filmmaker, I love that he took risks and never gave up on the prequels, no matter what the critics and the fans told him. And look where we are now! What I find frustrating about the prequels is the missed potential, because I think these movies could have been really good if there were some few minor changes, because conceptually, these movies are excellent and so good. Even though I like the sequels, I think the sequels are conceptually bad movies, because they're forcibly continuing on the happily ever after ending of Return of the Jedi. Ryan and JD were fighting an uphill battle, because it was difficult to give post-episode 6 Luke Skywalker a proper character arc, and it was kind of inevitable Han Solo and Luke would die tragic deaths. Anyways, what concepts in the prequels do I mean? Well, on paper, the general structure of those prequels are excellent. Young boy born in slavery because a great Jedi Knight falls in love and tragically turns evil because of love and accidentally kills his lover. It's an excellent concept for a story, but the execution was just horrible. Because Lucas had a million other ideas, we didn't have enough time to know Anakin as a character and his personality, his relationship with Obi-Wan and Palpatine, so his eventual fall in the story feels rushed and nonsensical. What's worse is because George Lucas's incompetency of writing human dialogue, most of the character interactions that should be wonderful feel cringy and hard to watch. Like, art romance scenes always fan-favorite scenes in fandom since people like to ship? It's the opposite in the Star Wars prequels because Padme and Anakin's lines are even parts that prequel stands skips through. Let's try to think of an example of a scene that was conceptually good, but failed due to execution, and could have been good if it was just tweaked a little with a rewrite. Say, the scene where Anakin goes on a bloodthirsty rant about how he killed an entire village of sand people for killing his mother, and how he hates them. I actually think the dialogue about how Anakin is angry and feels no remorse isn't bad, because it shows Anakin is a psychopathic monster deep inside, and he really likes revenge. The problem is the context. He's spouting this to his love of his life. I know Anakin's sad about his mom dying, but what sane man would do that? You see, that's where the trouble began. That smile. That damn smile. What's worse, this could have been fixed easily. Just change the scene so that Anakin is shouting this on a hologram phone call to Palpatine instead of Padme. Then when Anakin shades, I, I hate, hate them, Palpatine will be like, it is only natural. They took their mother, you wanted revenge. It will be great character moments for both of them, and will make Palpatine grooming Anakin more natural. What's weird is that maybe even John Williams thought this was a better alternative and was trying to give subtle hints to George to change the story, cause you can hear the Emperor's theme during this scene. But the women, and the children too. And in the next movie, Palpatine literally says how Anakin told him about the Sand People. Remember what you told me about your mother? And the sand people. Would have been nice to see that on screen, George. George Lucas really should have been the IDM man like he was for ESB and ROTJ and gave the writing and directing duty to the other people for the prequels. The dream match between IDM man and competent director was only seen twice in Star Wars, in my opinion, and that was episode 5 and 6 and the Clone Wars, and they're one of the best Star Wars contents created. Anyways, my conclusion is, most people forgot about the awfulness of the prequels because of nostalgia flavor rose-tinted glasses since they grew up with it. They just remembered the concepts and George Lucas's wonderful ideas, the shows and merchandise that spinned out of the prequels, forget all the horrible BS that comes with it in the prequels. And after the sequels, which are the worst thing that exists is Elon Musk, now the prequels are magically misunderstood masterpieces. And I still disagree. Yes, the Clone Wars fixed the problems and filled in the plot tools, and yes, the ideas and worlds presented in the movies are wonderful, but still not enough for me. I love the Star Wars prequel universe, but I still refuse to call them good movies. To me, it's fixing the problem after it's too late. You know what the prequels are? They're the No Man's Sky of movies, fixing the problem after it comes out. Then I guess the Star Wars sequels are the Fall Off 76 in its current state. All of this just works. Anyways, the difference is games gets updates, but the movies don't get updates. Cause if you try to update movies, it will be a disaster like the special edition changes of the OT, so don't try it. Still, 
These bad movies are Star Wars to me, so I still enjoy them despite calling them bad movies. Yeah, people, you can enjoy things that you don't think are good. So that's why I love Rise of Skywalker or Dumpster Fire 2. And after playing it, I can say, THIS GAME IS FUCKING HORRIBLE! George had a vision, and he made it real. I can respect that, and you can too. But you have to admit, he was just a really stubborn man about it, and that's all. Thanks for watching. This video really turned out to be a sequel bashing video than a prequel bashing video than I thought it would be. It's my ultimate love and hate letter to the prequels which I grew up with. It was fun talking about these movies. I love talking about the Star Wars prequels so I'll probably review the prequels individually in the future so look forward to that too. Also I need to advertise, we have a fun discord server. Most of the official gear server is filled with nonsense about Pokemon, so I request all of you Star Wars stands to come here so that Star Wars chats get more popular. You guys can argue about which trilogy is the best. I hope to see you there.